In this example, we'll create our own block to draw a square and then refine that to draw any shape. So in the variable section, there's the make block um, area where we can create our own block. In this case, we're typing in square and we're building up the square as we saw before. That is just a repeat loop with, that loops four times and we'll have a um, move and a turn. So we'll just move 10 pixels here and we'll turn the 90 degrees as you'd expect for a square. Then after I've created that, this square, I can then be able to uh, use this in my own SNAP program. So this new block is available to me called square. So if I drag this up here and then just create a simple program where I click the green flag, I may want to then do some pin operations to clear the canvas area and then uh, place the pin down and then I draw my square. So if I run this particular snap program, it will do as you might expect and draw a small square that's 10 pixels on each side. Well, in this case, the number or the size of the square is very fixed to just 10 pixels. So in this uh, extension, we're going to modify square by adding a parameter. So I right click on the plus sign of, of the name of the square block. I type in a new parameter called size that I make as a number and then now what I can do is just take that parameter and instead of moving 10 pixels I move the number that's specified as the parameter so now I need to fill that in back in the place where I call this block in my main program so I can then use this to draw a square of 30 pixels followed by a square of say 50 pixels so now if I run this I'll get two squares of different sizes so the next thing that we'd like to do is extend this further and make it draw any shape. So the first thing we'd like to do is make this block visible in the motion category. So I click on the top of the square and I can pick which palette area this will be saved in. So uh, this is moved from the variables area over to the motion uh, area. So you can see square there now. So we're going to edit square and we'll change the name of this eventually. But first we want to just create another input name. So in addition to the length of the square, we want to specify, in this case, how many sides this eventual shape will have. So I repeat the number of sides. And the turn here would be 360 divided by the number of sides. So those are the two changes I made. Now instead of just a regular square, I can draw any shape. It might be appropriate to then rename this also to draw shape. So I can draw a shape of any number of sides of any length now. So we went from a very fixed square to now a draw shape block that's very general. And as mentioned in the lesson, this is a good example of procedural abstraction. So for example, if I want to draw a triangle. I can just uh, put the number of sides at three. If I wanted to draw an octagon, or if I want to just repeat the idea of a square, I can draw a square here as before. And then if I want to do an octagon, I can just change the number of sides to 8. And then draw the octagon. If I wanted to draw a circle, um, I could do a total of 360 for the number of sides to approximate the circle. I need a very small number of pixels here because of the number of changes. So if I change that to just one pixel and 360 sides, I can approximate a circle. This again is a great example of procedural abstraction and how we went from a very general square over to a more detailed um, draw shape.